Happy New Year, everyone. Happy 2023. I'm Cherie Burton, and this is Stand Speak Shine, formerly known as Women Seeking Wholeness. If you didn't listen to my episode last week, let me just give you the brief rundown on why I changed the name. I'm no longer a woman seeking wholeness. I've had a lot of little mini awakenings and realizations to the fact that we already are whole, each one of us. We just have to unearth it. We have to remember it and we have to embrace it. So it's been really like embracing the brand that I already had. I've been using Stan Speak Shine for a while for my retreats and online programs and coaching. And I just thought, you know, that needs to be the name of the podcast. So today we're going into a beautiful conversation with Donna Bond. She's a catalyst for personal transformation, a spiritual and business coach and author of the book, Original Wisdom, Harness the Power of the Authentic You. We're going to explore what it means to feel fulfilled, what you do when you start to experience intermittent episodes of emptiness. And I get pretty transparent in this episode about how recently I've ventured into those really lonely waters myself and what transpired and what I've learned since. It's really powerful stuff to just own that you get to dictate how you feel and that for you to be authentic means for you to let go and find what's really inside of you begging to be explored and validated and most importantly felt. So I announced this last week and I'm continuing to uh, extend this offer for 40% off my Stand, Speak, Shine 12 week course. It's only a $222 course, so you get over $80 off. It's at a very affordable price point for the depth that I go into and how thoroughly I explore these 12 feminine embodiment principles. So I hope you'll go check that out and just go to stancebeshine.com forward slash course and you can read all about it and enter the code at checkout, Stand Speak Shine 40. So Stand Speak Shine is in all caps and then the number 40. It's been my great joy to create that to dive into those depths of rebirth and transformation and everything involved in really coming home to yourself and being alive in who you actually are. So go on over to stanspeakshine.com and check that out. And here we go now with Donna Bond. Donna Bond from Costa Rica. I have a special love for Costa Rica. I think I shared with you earlier. But it's fun to see, those of you who are watching on YouTube, you'll be able to check this out. But she's got all this foliage behind her and it's just so lush and green. And I've literally got a blanket of snow. I mean, probably three feet of snow. (laughs) I'm so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, it's a winter wonderland. And today is my birthday. Happy birthday. You are a gift to me. And this conversation, I feel, is going to be very... um, soul enriching mm. but also the best gift well i'm honored to uh be with you on your birthday thank you thank you so let's just get right into this so the topic of this episode is on being fulfilled how can you feel fulfilled because mm. For all intents and purposes, a person can look like they have everything that they could possibly want or need. They could have a lot of great relationships. They could have a lot of wealth, let's just say, or people around them or resources or all kinds of blessings and gifts. And they can feel empty. And I have felt that way. I don't know if you felt that way. Oh, yes. Yes. That's where my journey began. (laughs) That's where my journey began and That's exactly right. that, you know, on the surface, it all looked shiny and perfect. And, you know, I had the job and I had the husband and I had the house and living in Southern California, you know, next to Tinseltown and all the excitement that comes with that. Mm. And deep down, there was this massive void, a massive void. Mm. Yeah, I feel like it's already too early to like tell the answer to this question. No, no, let's do it. <laughs> I I was just let me just just be super vulnerable now because I'm all about the real these days. Uh, I felt this a couple of weeks ago so mm-hmm. profoundly that I was like, I mean, it was right, be- you know, it was like the week before Christmas or something, and I um, 
I just went into this real wilderness of feeling unsupported, alone. Um, I couldn't drum up the feeling of I'm so blessed or, you know, life is great. And it wasn't like a true depressive episode or anything like it was just something shot through like, you know, emptiness. Mm -hmm. And I was, I'll get into, you know, I'll tie this up later as to how I came through that. But it was just like the last vestiges of me just sort of like owning the space I'm in and being a voice and all that. But I ha- it's almost like I had to travel through another little wilderness to really go into inquiry around how am I going to fill this up, but not in the old way. So I'll, I'll so let's rip that. <laughs> I want to, I want you to go deeper into owning the space that I'm in, like mm. as you were having those feelings and as that was coming up for you. Yeah. As you went deeper into it, what happened? It was like a little girl who was looking around for her, like you got lost in the grocery store and you couldn't find your parents and you were so small and everything was so big. It was akin to that. Say it in the first person. Okay. So I felt like a lost little girl who, who wasn't, no one was coming to, to save me. No one even knew I was missing. Mm. And interestingly enough, Donna, I also felt like I had to be the parent to find the little me. Mm-hmm. And that was going to be my postscript. I was going to drop that later, but I'll go ahead and drop it now. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was, no one's coming to save you, little mm-hmm. girl, mm-hmm. except big Shree, yeah. authentic Shree. Mm-hmm. And so it was just this whole like, ooh, but that, that feeling is so uncomfortable. Just that yes. empty. Yeah. Dark. Yeah. And as you were with her, as big Sheree was with little Sheree, Mm -hmm. what happened in that moment? Oh, it was, it was like this beautiful reunion and it was no, here was the thought that came after that. No one can love you at the level that you can love you. Yes. Even my mother, who I absolutely adore and is the most kind and just an angel of a mother, my dad, everyone who loves me and adores me. It was, and I'm getting chills right now. It was just like, you're the one. You're the one. You're the one you've been waiting for. You are your beloved. Yes. And I actually have a tattoo listeners that don't, that think I'm super conservative and don't know much about me. I actually have a tattoo on my left inner wrist and it says beloved. Mm. And I recently found out that that's what my name means. Um, I got this tattoo almost three years ago, but anyway, (laughs) that's my favorite word, beloved. And yeah, so it was just this like, Ooh, and I'd like to say I've mastered it in the last few weeks, but it was so I had to journal through it. I had to cry through it. I had to take the time and space in my busy, whatever. And don't you think that's a crucial sort of typically when we feel that emptiness, we run to food or we run to a a friend and call a friend and all of the things, all the tools. Mm -hmm. And my tool was I'm going to journal, I'm going to breathe and I'm going to find out why am I feeling this right now or crying out loud, you know, life's good. And mm. it's, it was just, it was such a beautiful, and I, and I have these little inner child healing Oracle cards that I got from somebody for Christmas. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. They're mm. beautiful by Kylie Dane. Beautiful. And you can see that she's got this little happy girl inside her heart. She's meditating, but she's got this really, really happy little child inside of her. Just like, ah, finally, you're listening to me. <laughs> And that's what that felt. That's, that's what fulfillment looks like to me. Mm. 
you know, when you're happy for no particular reason, when you just have this joy that is a wellspring that is rising up from inside of you. And I think the misnomer is, and we've all been taught this, we've all grown up this way to believe that it's going to be found in something outside of ourselves, right? Hence, the seeking. And we pursue things outside of ourselves in the corporate arena, like so many of us did, like I did, like you did. And then that morphs into seeking for the spiritual, seeking for those inner awarenesses and seeking for how can I be more holy? How can I be more, you know, godlike, if you will? Because I think what we're really seeking is God. Yes. We're seeking. That was the feeling of the little girl. Yeah. And that, that was the, I guess you could say the forerunner of my feeling of emptiness, if I'm being honest, was I don't feel God right now. Mm -hmm. And then that launched me into like, ooh, why? What's wrong with me? Right. Right. So there's and a lot of judgment that comes up when we don't feel that. That's right. Well, and I think, is it not the judgment itself that stands in the way? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right? It's like you are the divine in ecstatic motion, as Rumi said, right? You are an expression of the divine. I am an expression of the divine. Every single person on this planet, like it or not, <laughs> <laughs> right. is an expression of the divine. And so when we're in that deep self-judgment and self-criticism, and I'm a type one on the Enneagram. I don't know if you know what Me that too. is. But well, I'm a one, like, three tie. So that means. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that pursuit for perfection all yes. the time. Right. Yes. And the type one, I know for myself you know, I have a really strong inner critic, really strong inner critic. And so no one is judging me as harshly and as deeply as I'm judging myself ever. And that can be like brutality. It's like inner brutality, literally. Mm -hmm. Self-abuse. And, and say it again. That's like self-abuse is kind of what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it is self-abuse. And so for me, so much fulfillment has been born out of acceptance. Mm. So walk us through that process, Donna, of, and I'm sure ebbs and flows for you, because how are we ever in total Always. self, you know, but, but what, what, what was the catalyst? What kind of drew that, you know, that awareness up for you and then allowed you to see it and then just move into that. What, what was that? Well, I had the great privilege and the great gift of um, being a student at the University of Santa Monica in their master's program for spiritual psychology. And uh, one of the things that the professors always say, Drs. Ron and Mary Holnick, is growth is a process, not an event, right? So the first thing that I want to let you know is that it's a process and we don't just wake up one day. And I, I think that's where people get themselves in troubles because in our, you know, got to have it now society, in our, you know, instant gratification, desire, everybody wants to just take the red pill or the blue pill and voila, you're awakened there you are. <laughs> and there you are. And I have been doing this work uh, almost every day. Now I'm, I'm 2023 will be 10 years. I enrolled myself in the master's program in 2013. So, so there's a big was, anniversary coming. So just to kind of bridge that for the listeners. So you had, you were, you were saying you were miserable. You had the life and the husband and the beauty and the money and all the things. And then you have this sort of awakening um, and then that bridged over to you enrolling in, in this master's program in spiritual psychology, correct? Yes and no. Um, 
I was following uh, some really illogical threads of energy. And at the time, I couldn't have told you, like, that's what I was doing. Now I know it and see it and live it. Um, at the time, it just looked like a really irrational and kind of foolish uh, pursuit that I was on. I went to go see a psychic, Sheree. And I was crying to her that I had to find my purpose. And um, it was a very significant age. I was 44. And 44 was how old my father was when he died. And so when I turned 44, all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute. What is my life about? I am on this conveyor belt of repetition, right? With the work that I was doing. And it was just a big hypnotic blur of my soul dying. <laughs> I mean, literally my soul was dying. And so I went to go see the psychic and she said, Donna, they're spelling it out for me. Spiritual psychology. Ooh. And I said, and what I told in you the before, hell is spiritual psychology? I love those two words together. I've even called myself a spiritual psychologist, even though that's not, I can't claim necessarily, but I just <laughs> love those two words together. Yeah. Yeah. So what is spiritual psychology? And then we can go back to your. Yeah. So spiritual psychology um, is a modality that teaches us that everything that's happening in our life is a beautifully designed opportunity being given to us for our growth and learning. And it teaches us to see our life through what's called the spiritual context or from the soul's perspective, I like mm -hmm. to say. And as we were just talking about judgment, right? Our ego and our personality is always in judgment of something. It's right, it's wrong. It's good. It's bad. It's black. It's white. Like we're constantly in the land of polarity here on planet Earth because that's where we live. So we get caught up constantly in this judgment and we don't even realize it. Right. Like we have preferences and we think that our preferences are preferences, but they're really judgments. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Right. Yeah. And is it OK that we have them? Yes, it is, because it's part of the human experience. But when we're seeing life through the lens of our higher self, or I like to call it our original wisdom, everything is neutral. And when everything is neutral, you're not entangled in that push pull or the back and forth of the criticism, the judgment, the right wrong making. Right. And then we can open ourselves and see from a higher place, our life. And we then recognize how perfect all of it is and that the highs and the lows are just part of the experience that we're having. And if we can stay out of judgment around the lows, then new things happen. Like we develop relationships with different aspects of our own beingness like you and your little girl, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And instead of looking for support or fulfillment or recognition outside of ourselves, and we chase something because we think we're going to get those things like, oh, if I write this book or if I launch this podcast or if I get that job or marry that guy, whatever the story is, right? Sure. Then I'm going to be happy. And that's what we've been taught. Yeah. But that's not really how it works. And you know that. And uh, I know that. And so does every single listener listening. It's like we hear that. And, you know, there's a lot of teachers saying that. I love how you're putting it together. And in the same breath, there's this, uh, this learned helplessness Ooh. around, okay, so how... How can I bust through all the layers? Maybe bust through is too masculine of a word, but mm -hmm. <laughs> how can I really get back into the heart of who I am? How do I mm -hmm. access that? Mm -hmm. I have my own way now, but I'm so curious about how you have been able, because we kind of talked about like this emptiness and then you kind of quote unquote, fill it. 
with that lovely self-acceptance, that self-compassion. And like you said, looking at it from a higher vantage point so that you can neutralize the situation and just love what is really. Mm -hmm. So walk us kind of through how, how Donna does that. Mm. What is your practice with that? Yeah. um, Well, the first part is to slow down and to recognize the resistance that you're creating. And what I mean when I say that, the resistance that I'm creating, it means somehow in the experience that I'm having, I want something to be different, right? Mm -hmm. So it's in that moment, not wanting anything to be different. It's literally moving yourself from an inward place, right? This is a, this is an inner shift that you're having where you come into cooperation or you come into alignment, you come into a deep, deep level of acceptance for exactly where you are, for exactly what's happening. And when you do that, the resistance will automatically drop. And what happens when the resistance drops is now we can let the higher power into the scenario. You know, I'm getting the image of a triangle right now, and you've got the two ends of the polarity on either side of the triangle. You know, you've got the right and the wrong, or you've got the good and the bad, you've gotten the whatever, the black and the white. But in the center of that triangle, you've got this high point, right? And at that high point, you're in the middle. You're in that place of neutrality. And so all the strife drops. And in that moment for myself, I recognize that I'm not doing that. (laughs) It's like I'm the one who is holding it up, but I'm also the one who can let it drop. And as I let it drop, I open And it's not even that I'm trying to open or I'm thinking about opening. It's just the natural response. It's the natural derivative of letting go of the resistance. And as we let go of the resistance and we open, then we recognize that there is a higher power, source, wisdom, whatever you want to call it, that is also at play here. And it is that that we want to be in communion with. And I don't mean to use like a religious word because I'm not, I don't promote any religion, right? Spiritual psychology is really about the relationship that we have with our higher self, the relationship that we're cultivating with our original wisdom. But it it's about being in communion with that energy. And that energy, energy is so magnificent because it's the energy of all that is it's the energy of the divine creator the divine creation and when we can just get a little sip of that just a little sip right you know how it is you get a little sip of that and it cures a lot of ills Mm -hmm. yeah it cures a lot it's actually like having you know three or four therapy sessions in a couple of seconds, things just kind of, but I will tell you that I had a lot of resistance to that for a long time because to me, God was, you know, coming to call me to repentance or, Mm. you know, about to correct me or Mm. there there was a punitive component to letting God in. And when you say all that is, you know, that's, that would overwhelm me to the point of now I can barely handle like this moment in time. And I'm going to open to all that is, and I'm I'm just saying like, I had reasons for not opening myself that Mm. I wasn't aware of. Yeah. 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 Totally normal. Right. And we've all, all, these are the programs that are running in our consciousness that are a result of everything that's come before us, 
a result of all of the things that we've been taught, the things that we've learned, the influences from our parents, our teachers, our governments, our society, our culture, on and on and on, right? There's all these influences constantly telling us who to be, how to be, why to be. And underneath all of that is this essence, right? And I think a big leap that I know I made was when I stopped imagining that God was shaped like a man with a beard and a staff in the sky, like yeah. hanging out, judging me and everybody else. Right. Like uh, that's not how I that think has about been seared into the collective conscious. Yes. Yes, it has. And it's really difficult to not feel separation from that kind of a God. It could not, not be more impersonal. Separation. What do you mean? So that's why I felt that separation. That's why I couldn't open myself. Cause it's like, mm. I already feel like I'm failing enough. Mm. If I open myself to this all knowing omnipotent God who balances justice with mercy. Well, I don't, I don't know if I want that. Yeah. I don't want, well, I don't, I and I, this took me literally <laughs> years to unpack what I'm telling you right now. It was because I've always been a devoted disciple, if you will, of truth. And I was, you know, very orthodox religious for most of my life. And the switch for me was kind of how you were saying in the corporate space where your soul was dying. I was amping up all of my religious practices and I was feeling worse and worse and worse and worse over over time compounded with interest. So sort of my, that's why I started this podcast four years ago, because when I was getting ready to turn 50, my health was suffering. All of my relationships were suffering. Um, I was heading into a death cycle, but it was, uh, it was what I'd asked for, but I didn't realize that it was coming in the form of literal annihilation. But, but, but it wasn't like that until I chose myself. When I finally chose myself, all hell broke loose. But leading up to that, I was getting sick. I was, you know, I was miserable, all of these things, because I was trying to please that God I just talked to you about, who was at the ready and micromanaging every single mistake that I made. And I had created these neural networks, <laughs> this programming, these train tracks in my brain and body please God, please God, please God, every thought, every action, every, every performance, every, everything. So, so yeah. So, and you know this because I talked to you before I changed the name of this podcast, but, but it was like seeking, seeking, seeking the energy of seeking, seeking mm -hmm. love, seeking, you know, wholeness. And yeah. I, and I really, really came to this um, deep, unplugging from the matrix of pleasing God. Yeah. And I know that sounds heretical to probably a lot of people, but it set me free. Yeah, absolutely. It set me free. And I've never felt more loved <laughs> yeah. by the divine. And I've never felt more love for myself and others. It's still very much a work in progress. I mean, it's definitely going to, process, whatever. And, uh, but I just wanted to insert that because, you know, when, when you, if this is why I couldn't align with, um, a group because I couldn't, I couldn't stand another person trying to punish me for something I was doing wrong. Yeah. It became yeah. absolutely unbearable. And then I took over <laughs> right. from punitive God and became my own punisher. And, and yeah. that unpacking was even worse than unplugging from pleasing God. That's the inner brutality, you know, mm. self-abuse. Yeah. Yes. I, I see you. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> I get you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and this is why it's so important to recognize that from the spiritual context, right from that place of our higher knowingness our original wisdom 
from that place of the authentic self, not the ego self, not the personality self, but from that higher self, everything is neutral, right? So there is no judgment. And there that's is a really no condemnation. Difficult. There is, that's a really real, I, I totally agree with you. And that's such a difficult paradigm for so many of us. Yeah. Who were taught this very evil, bad, good, right, righteous, not righteous kind of yes polarity part. Uh, I, I have a whole thesis around how this creates mental illness in a lot of people. Yeah, and and including myself, and and not recognizing that 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 paradigm of duality polarity all of the black white good bad right wrong thinking for somebody who already has a proclivity or a tendency or who has maybe just some genetic programming or intergenerational <laughs> patterning around this to unplug from that is so incredibly <laughs> like it's like somebody it's like i was plugged into a mothership like an astronaut, <laughs> then I untethered myself and went reeling. Yeah. And then I got to decide what resonated for me and giving, that's why the liberation happened. Yeah. It's like, how can I be pleasing God right now when I'm miserable? Is that, is that the plan? It's supposed to be a plan of happiness, but I'm not happy. And you mentioned earlier in our conversation that Feeling fulfilled means being happy for no particular reason for the sake of, yeah, for the sake of just you exist. And, and that was unfathomable to me. Yeah. It's still something I have, to, I have to like, one coach told me once, she's like, sure, your work is to not work so hard. I'm like, okay, so how do I, what kind of work do I need to do to it? So I don't work hard, you know, it's like give me more stuff to do. And then it's like, no, no, no. You know, when we can home. bring in a deep level of compassion around the judgments that we hold, the judgments for ourselves and the judgments for everyone else, when we can bring in that compassion, we can start to loosen, right? The grip that that discontent holds over us. And, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of crazy things on this planet, right? And every single person, even like the worst criminal, the worst person who's committed the worst crime, who's done the most heinous act that we could ever possibly think of on the planet, even that person is a drop of the divine. They too are a drop of all that is. And so when we can get curious and inquisitive and compassionate around, well, what happened to them that led them to the choices that they made, right? Because we are all products of the choices that we make, whether we want to admit that or not admit that. Some of us might want to play the victim and stay in blame and finger point and not take responsibility for our lives. Spiritual psychology is all about taking responsibility for the experience that you're having mm -hmm. and recognizing that the judgments that we are holding are really misunderstandings. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I was just talking to my husband last night about like, this is a real extreme example, but he's like, he used Jeffrey Dahmer as like the example. You know, you know, that is a very deeply hurt, wounded individual because hurt people hurt people. That's right. But when somebody in your life that you have a relationship, let's just say with, um, sometimes they're, they would be harder for you to love and accept than Jeffrey Dahmer. And I know that sounds really whatever, but, but we just get enmeshed in expectations. And if we're not feeling that compassion for ourselves, there is no way that we can feel deep compassion for someone else. And, 100%. 
and and you were talking about writing and podcasting and everything you know uh <laughs> you know this i've been working on this book for a while and i put it away for months and have just come back to it and i recognize that it was really difficult to write my memoir and not feel judgment or like how I was manipulated and how, and it was like, I was totally in this victim consciousness trying to write my memoir. Mm. And I recognized that I could still have compassion for the wounding, but if I'm going to be able to write something that frees me, I'm actually writing it for myself, but if I'm actually going to write something that feels aligned and truthful and whatever, I have to own that compassion for myself. And then hopefully that comes through for others to look at. These are the things I walked through. Can you relate? As opposed to, I can't believe I did that. Or I can't believe this happened to me. Poor me, right? That, and I don't like that ickiness anymore. And that fuels the emptiness and it fuels the alienation and isolation. That's right. That That's right. Yeah. And so coming into acceptance that, you know, in one way or another, you were a participant in that. And perhaps it's part of your larger life lesson of what it is your soul is inviting you to grow through in this life and to learn in this life. And one of the interesting things I always find with my clients is there's predominant themes, right? There's themes that if you go back to that little girl, right? Shh. Different circumstances, different time frame, different people, but but same theme will get carried through again and again. And that happens because that is what's on offer for our healing. And that is the part of us or the aspect of us that is calling for our love and acceptance. Mm -hmm. And it's not the part of our personality that is even capable of bringing that love and acceptance to that aspect of ourself because our personality doesn't want to look at it or see it or acknowledge it or notice it or even know about it. But this is when we can get neutral, we can align ourselves with this benevolent force of loving that has no judgment. And it's that energy that heals. It's mm -hmm. that energy of, of a love that is more than anything that we can even comprehend in this life, more than the love for our children or our parents or our spouses. Mm -hmm. It's that phenomenon that we can be bestowed with. And like I said earlier, just give me a sip of that, right? Like I, yeah. if you can just get a sip of that, it cures a lot. It sustains, it sustains for a while. So yeah, that's what fills us up, right? That That's really the only thing. That's I right. I mean, authentically, there are many things that can fulfill us. Like we love our kids and whatever, but or, you know, we're having a great day or I don't know, like we're having fun. But when it comes to that deep, deep fulfillment. Yeah. I was listening to, I can't remember what podcast, but um, they were talking about, we all have the same primal wound of separation or seeming separation from leaving our cosmic home and descending here onto this planet. And we're like, what just happened? Like we all carry that wound of separation. Yeah. And so for me, for so many years, being a seeker and looking outside and, you know, women seeking wholeness for almost four years. And now it's like, no, it's here. Like I, I, I kind of found it. Like it was never, never really lost. That's the illusion. I was never that little girl in the grocery store who was separated from her parents or from herself. I was always home. So I love it. One thing I, I really appreciate and by the way, I should mention your book is called Original Wisdom, Harness the Power of the Authentic You. So all the stuff we're talking about with authenticity and coming home. And when you incorporate or when you if you could encapsulate, I should say, the term original wisdom, because you mentioned it earlier, how would you 
How would you define that? Yeah, um, it's the inherent intelligence in all beings that's rooted in unconditional love. Mm, That's so resonant. So you mentioned something about hang up the how. (laughs) (laughs) And I think this is where those of us who have that really strong inner critic think that if we could just work harder and if we knew Mm -hmm. exactly what to do, we knew how. This is why I interview people because I'm like, how do you do it? How does she do it? <laughs> <laughs> Inquiring you know, minds want to know. Um, the how is not up to us because we live in this space of infinite potential, right? There are a bazillion different ways that things can come to us, that we can align with what we want, where we can align with our purpose. We can align with what's going to fulfill us. And it's really the job of the universe to be able to deliver that to us. And so our job is to bring in more clarity about the what and the why. And this is where people get stuck, right? Because they start visualizing things outside of themselves. But I want to encourage everybody to visualize the things that you want inside of yourself, right? You want more joy. Like you, how you want more feel. fulfillment, how you want to feel. Exactly. Not only how you want to feel, but how do you want to think, right? How do you want to be? How do you want to move through the world? What is your way of being in the world? How do you want to show up? And so bringing clarity to that and the power of intention, the power of our thoughts is way more powerful than anybody ever wants to believe. And, you know, we only have a few more minutes, but I could go on and on on. And a lot of this is in my book, Original Wisdom, Harness the Power of the Authentic You. But just before our podcast, you know, it's the first day of the new year. I have like 101,000 things that have to get done, but do you want to know what I did? I worked on my intentions for 2023 Mm -hmm. because we're in the middle of this moon cycle where we are moving up. We have the waxing moon moving towards this full moon that's going to be here before we know it. And I still wanted to capitalize on that energy Um, of creation and that energy of building. And so I just sat and last night I was envisioning um, an herb garden that I'm going to create here in Costa Rica. Mm. And so that's on my, you know, intention list, my sacred yes for 2023. And Do you have a word for 2023? A lot of people choose a mantra or word. Yeah, my word is reverence this year. My word is reverence. And um, reverence for the journey. Reverence for ourselves, for our humanness, for all of it, for all of the pretty, polished, perfect places and for all of the messy broken right we talked about that ugly crying (laughs) yeah and let's let that be okay yeah it's all yeah i uh i love that my mantra for this year is power to create which Mm. at first i wasn't in resistance to that because i'm like oh that's overachieving Shree, like picking up herself by the bootstraps again, but it's like, no, no, like a different way of creating exactly what we're talking about. Very heart-based, very, you know, very in line with my soul voice and just letting that express. This will be the year I finished my manuscript. That's the intention. And uh, even if I don't, just like you said, this is all about growth, this whole thing. It's all about the journey. And so I get to enjoy instead of pining for the finished product. I get to enjoy being in a journey, the messy journey of receiving and creating. Um, so, so beautiful. And that's a different power too, right? The power to create. It's like, it's a different power that you're calling on. Sharia. Yes. yes. 
Yeah. And And the power that says there's more than just my own efforts, that there is a power I am connected to that is greater than my small self. And Mm -hmm. I am open to that. Yeah. Thank you for adding that. I'm going to write that in my journal. (laughs) (laughs) So Donna, I know you have a group coaching thing coming up. Uh, We're here right in the middle of 2023. And so much potential. I'm hearing, like, I don't know if you follow astrology. It sounds like you do because you, you follow the waxing and waning of the moon cycles and things. But I know that from what I've heard of different, you know, astrologers giving in the synopsis of this year, it's kind of like we're coming out of this isolation cycle, trauma cycle of the world. And people are feeling that need to to come out, I guess you could say, and and be who they are. But also not without its, you know, challenges, of course, planetary. We've we've got a lot of growing pains ahead of us. So anyway, talk about your group coaching and where people can find you and connect to that. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, It's called Empower the Authentic You. And it's a lot of the concepts that are in my book. But, you know, to sort of summarize it, it's about authentic empowerment. It's, It's not about or it's unlearning how we've derived our power through so many things outside of us. And it's really unraveling that and understanding at a visceral level, at a tangible and practical level, how do I remove the blocks that are standing in the way of that wellspring that we talked about, that inner place of upliftment that just happens naturally, that joy for no particular reason, because it comes from an inside place, but it's smashed down in there. <laughs> it's yeah. buried underneath a bunch of crap. And so you need and a guide so, to support you so you can unearth that in safety. Yes. That's what coaching is yeah. so brilliant at. Yes, it is. Especially someone like you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so it's um, you can learn more information at empowertheauthenticyou.com. And uh, it's a nine-week group container. We when does it launch- start? January 19th, 18th, oh, okay. something like that. Yeah. yeah. Third week in January. So Ooh. yum. Well, thank you, Donna and happy new year to you. Happy um, birthday. Really, to oh, you. Thank you. I love having a birthday so close to the new year. Cause I'm like, Ooh, I get a new lease on everything. Like <laughs> who do I want to be? What does 54 look like now? Like you were mm. saying when you were talking about how do I want to walk through life? How do I want to feel? How do I want to interact with people? How do, how do I, I, those are the things that are up for me right now. And so, yeah, just redefining what it means to be the age I am, the life station I'm in and the limitless opportunities that await in an authentic soul-based way. That's what's calling to me. And um, so, yeah, it'll be fun to see what gets created and how. (laughs) I'm going to hang up the how though. (laughs) Hang up the how, just get really clear on the what and the why and let the universe fill in the blanks because there's a lot of different ways you can get from Los Angeles to Boston, right? There's a lot of different ways. And when we get fixated on our way and we think there's only one way, then we force ourselves against life. And when we force ourselves against life, we get hurt. Mm. The universe is trying to help us. The universe is guiding us, nudging us, coaxing us at every turn. And all we have to do is learn how to pay closer attention to the doors that are opening before us instead of trying to slam ourselves into a wall. <laughs> That's yeah. <cool. laughs> yeah. So everything we're talking about is just deep trust and, op- you know, just trusting that that. Things are aligning for our good. So I love it. Well, thank you so much. This has been really, really fulfilling for me (laughs) to come back to our theme. Thank you so much, Sheree. I hope each one of you are looking ahead at this year as your most epic year ever. (laughs) That doesn't always mean clean, safe, and perfect as Donna and I just discussed, but it does mean being willing to roll up your sleeves and get messy and do the work. The real work being self-compassion, 
opening yourself to receive all that is from the divine as you define it so that you can feel alive they can feel that divine support and so that you can truly feel love so that's my wish for myself and for you that we can make this a year of true intentional love work and you can find donna's work on donnabond.com remember to follow me on sheree.burton on instagram as well as asking to join our new and revised private facebook group stand speak shine community talk to you soon and happy new year